recorded at ARC Advisory Group's annual World Industry Forum in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome ARC Field Systems Analyst, Paula Hollywood. We're here today speaking with Paul Marshall, President and CEO of Ivera Corporation, a leading provider of asset management performance solutions. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Paul, Ivera has been involved in capital-intensive industries for about 15 years. What supply chain strategies are you seeing companies employ to get more out of and extend the lives of their assets? I think, Paula, that when you look at macroeconomics and what's happened over the last number of years, what we've seen is a restriction of capital in a lot of situations. So people don't have the ability to replace assets the way they have typically been able to do that. So what you see is pressure to extend the useful life of those assets beyond what they are. It's compounded by the fact that operating expenses are also under a great deal of pressure in most industries. People are being driven to drive 2%, 3% decreases out of their operating base. The types of strategies they're using are things like Ivara is providing, which is how do I manage those assets in a much more strategic basis? A lot of the companies we talk to will acknowledge that they have a very tactical approach to a lot of what they do. They employ a number of different tools on the plant floor, um, all, with a benefit, all with the intention to drive benefit and cost savings in their, in, in their asset base. A lot of those things are not happening because they are disparate technologies. There's a number of different technologies that operate out on the floor that aren't tied to an ERP, that aren't integrated with, with any systems whatsoever. So they are asking us to come in and help them manage the data flow that they have running through the floor, as well as turn that into implementable and executable work so that the benefit they're getting from technologies they've already bought is actually being interfaced and changing the work that companies are doing every day with the intention of extending the life of those assets and driving down the operating expenses they're incurring. Well, that's very interesting because traditionally uh, these types of uh, supply chain executives are not involved in the development of a reliability strategy, but that's changing. What do you see as the drivers behind that change? I think there are, a couple, there are a couple drivers, and the principal one is the change in macroeconomics, which is causing a lot of these decisions to rise up the organization. So you have where traditionally a plant manager, a reliability engineer would be involved in, in assessing situations and in making decisions around what they're going to do with that asset base. Companies are starting to acknowledge that they have hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of assets under, under uh, their care, and they need to go through and make sure that strategies are being deployed on a macro level. It's not a tactical decision anymore. So we're starting to see executives get more engaged to make sure that there's consistency of data across the organization, to make sure that similar technologies are being deployed across multiple different plants and you get rid of some of the disparate technologies that are all over the place. Ivara helps them with that situation by allowing them to bring all that data together and implement FMEA-based, um, condition-based monitoring uh, solutions to that, to that asset base. Uh, what differentiates a world-class organization in terms of reliably managing the performance of their assets? A lot of what we're seeing on the world-class side is really two big drivers. The people we've seen be most successful in implementing their asset reliability solutions have two things going for them. The first is that they have a very high-level executive sponsorship. So it's not a plan that is waning at an individual plant level. It's something that goes all the way up to the top ranks of the organization. This builds accountability. This builds people who have true ownership of those assets. And those executive sponsors make sure that the organization, including both operations and maintenance, are focused on the best care for those assets. So first thing we see in best in class is that you have high level executive sponsorship and commitment that is tied to the success of that program. 
The second thing, which is kind of a bit of a, um, a contradiction to what you typically hear, which is most of the best-in-class companies actually implement their solutions faster rather than slower. We get a lot of, this is going to take five years for us to go through this and implement it. When we look at the people who have been most successful from an economic perspective, from a culture change perspective, they have the executive sponsorship, which is required, and that's driven very quickly through an organization. Um, it's, it's a two-year process in a lot of the most successful companies that we've seen. It's a focus. They put everything behind it rather than it being part of a side project with a number of other things going on. They truly view it as a strategic initiative and they look at the implementation of solutions like Ivara as something that they have to do and they have to do quickly and they have to get everybody on board with. So those are probably the two biggest factors we see in best in class. I'd have to agree with you, ARC research supports that position that corporate leadership is essential to success. Yes. Uh, monitoring all of the assets in a plant generates enormous amounts of data. Mm. How does one manage such all that data such that it's usable and actionable? Yeah, it, it's a, that's growing, you know, as, as time goes on and as people start to get more sophisticated about what they're looking at, they're starting to acknowledge that data is a real problem. For Ivara EXP, we sit between the plant floor and whatever ERP you might be running. And a lot of what we're doing is helping people, whether it's, um, whether it's OSI data, any kind of data that they have running on the plant floor, we help pull into the software and then help integrate that with whatever ERP they're running. Again, having all these disparate technologies like thermography and oil analysis and vibration analysis may be the very best technologies in the world, and they may be able to drive significant benefit. But if they're not integrated with an ERP, they're not changing the work that's being done on the floor every day. And so that's where you get the execution failure, is that an executive will get very frustrated because they've spent all kinds of time and all kinds of money with all kinds of technologies on the floor and they're not seeing the benefits of it. And so we come in and help them pull all that together into an actual asset strategy so that they understand what the role of those technologies are what benefit they're supposed to get from them, why they're even collecting that data. In a lot of cases, we find people are collecting data that, that doesn't really tie to an actionable item per se. So we help them understand how their assets are going to fail and what data is required in order to properly predict that failure of the equipment so that we get the work onto work orders and we get preventative work done by the field ahead of those failures actually happening. Paul, Iver has been very instrumental in helping Scottish Power achieve the British publicly available specification 55 for asset performance management. Can you share with us how Iver helped Scottish Power achieve that certification? Yes, again, Scottish Power was, um, is a very good customer and they, when we talk about best in class, they're a very good example of a lot of the things that we just discussed in terms of what best in class companies are doing. They had a real focus on maintenance and process safety and that's what drove them to look for PAS 55. The role we played in that was again helping them bring all the data together that they needed to, me to measure and monitor in order to achieve those standards and we also helped them from a policy perspective because we have something called a work smart methodology that maps that mirrors essentially PAS 55 standards and so as they implemented Ivara EXP and implemented the work smart methodology that we have built for them um, that helped them drive them towards the PAS 55 standards so that as they went through the audit process it allowed them to achieve with very little changes the full certification that they were looking for. They have, uh, they have mobile solutions on the floor that they're using which are, we've been in the mobile space for a while now, uh, handhelds and, and tablet type solutions are something that are increasingly important and it also allowed them to drive very close to real-time data through the PAS 55 system, which they then rolled all the way up to the top levels of the organization to make sure that as they set these targets for PAS 55, we had put a mechanism in place for them to continue to measure, monitor their progress against that, and drive towards the PAS 55 certification. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, Paul. It's a very interesting topic. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We've been speaking with Paul Marshall, President and CEO of Ivera Corporation. Thank you for watching.